but the eastern one has these barnyard notes, kind of a damp locker room kind of character to it. And there's, it's there's a great sample I got from the cup that which I can bring up to you, Steve, when I come visit. That um, smells like a, a wet daggy horse. That's exactly what it <laughs> smells like. Yeah, that's a really good description. It really is. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, I, I can't say I picked that up before. Um, <laughs> well, are you getting are you getting American up. leatherwood or is this Australian leatherwood? Um, but, I mean, no, this um, is Australian, yeah, Australian so, buckwheat. Buckwheat. Thank you. Sorry, uh, but yeah, it's Australian yeah. buckwheat. So I would imagine it would be different. So that's interesting. Yeah, it's still black. It's black is good though. I like black. I, I got a yeah. I got a shock when I opened up the the bucket and said, oh. That's black. <laughs> <laughs> so you can make a black mead and have it really be black, you know? <laughs> you could. Yeah. And that's, that's the plan for it. There you um, go. So, yeah. I'm not sure. We, we used some in a in a braggot, and um, it's actually a bit polarizing. So it's sort of about 50-50, like the honey in it and don't like the honey in it. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, our leatherwood, something like that too. It's there's some people who love it and other people who really hate it. It, it is very polarizing. I agree. Yeah. Interesting. Now I, I'm not sure that leatherwood is that fun to use either. Even with a lot of oh, I love it. We haven't found you love it. Yeah. Well, the one, <laughs> the enough, one yeah. that he, the one that uh, Hamish had us taste was um, it was really interesting, but there was that cat pee thing going on there. <laughs> As David was reminding us on the back. <laughs> yeah, panel. there was. I mean, it was like there, and then it was gone, and then it was good. You know, and so it was like, wait, what? Cat pee? Wait, oh, hey, with the finish on this is nice. You know, so it distracts <laughs> you. It's a distracting you honey. You've got to ask what Hamish is actually brewing with it. This is very that. true, yeah. Hamish, are you are you uh, shamming us on what your honeys taste like? <laughs> no, this is just a honey. This wasn't a, a mead. <laughs> yeah, he just had Fair little enough. he just had little tuppers of honey. It was it was kind of cool. So yeah, he spent a good bit of the week just sitting at a sitting at a uh, a little. Uh, table arrangement with a bunch of people seated around him with sticks in their hands trying all the honeys while he gave a honey lecture on Aussie honey as long as people kept filling my glass up with mead I had no complaint (laughs) and they did didn't they yes they did (laughs) at any given time I saw let me see I saw um, I saw Canadians I saw Americans from all over the country I saw at least one Costa Rican um Probably a couple of poles, and and who knows who all else. I mean, you had quite a variety of people there. Yeah, that's a good bit of Aussie honey ambassadorship there, my friend. Of course, now now we're gonna buy all your honey, and y'all won't have any. But that's your own fault. You brought it over here. <laughs> Just saying, you know, no bitching later. You should have left it at home. <laughs> we're selling you all our queens already. So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, so Amy, Amy shall go down in history as the uh, the person who uh, <laughs> sold all her honey, who ruined the, the Australian honey, honey industry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course it won't be. The, it won't be the Canadians taking it all because no. we have to make our own for a meter. <laughs> exactly, y'all can't buy it anyway. They don't allow you to do that. But uh, and yeah. you said something earlier about you said bush honey. What's bush honey? I'm assuming honey in the bush, but I mean, is it like a is it like clover honey here? You know, <laughs> you know. I didn't know if that was like a sort of common generic sort of honey, or if that was a particular varietal. Well, it can be from like from the bush. So, like what I've found is I've, I'm paying more attention to honey as I'm getting into meat, and uh-huh. I think that's probably true of most people. You, you, it's nice, and you put it on toast, and you don't taste it very much. <laughs> Some Australian honeys that are, like from bees that are spending a lot of time in the bush, especially in high summer, those honeys can get really strong and they can have strong eucalyptus flavors. They can be from wattle. They can be mixed up with anything. Um, there's a place near my parents in um, in the Bellarine Peninsula where they get, it's a real mix of stuff from the bush, but stuff from people's cottage gardens. So natives and non-natives all mixed up. It's a, it's a lovely honey. Um, so I think we're, we're sort of talking around that question now. Like what honeys are fantastic that are really uniquely Australian? And, and I think that, I mean, leatherwood is, that would be really something. Um, 
a wildflower from the bush can be amazing. Hamish, and do you guys use that at all? Just a general wildflower um, that's. I, I have one honey that I that I like, which is called a, a mountain honey, which is typically mm. a wildflower, but it is from eucalypt trees up in the uh, Victorian Alps. Um, and there's so many trees in flower at the time, they can't actually identify what the blossom is. So it's a, a uh, natural blend of, of the trees up in the mountains, the alpine trees at the time. Yeah, that sounds great. And that's kind of what I'm talking about, because calling it wildflower doesn't really seem to talk to what it is when you're in Australia. Like, wildflower can be daisies, or it could be... Yeah. Wild, wildflower makes very me different... think, of, think of big, flat, rolling plains in England with flowers popping yeah, right. up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, right. when, when they call it that here, what they, what they really mean is, we know it was flowers, but we don't know which ones. That's what they when they say wildflower mm. honey. That's pretty much what they're saying in America. That's anyway. sort of the catch-all for mm -hmm. you know it's honey yeah. and it's it honey. came from and it's flowers. honey. It came from it came from nectar from flowers. And we're pretty somewhere. sure, yeah, we're pretty so, sure flowers were involved. So wildflowers. <laughs> there, there was one honey that I brought you, Vicky, and and everyone over over at the cup basically tasted. It was called a, a Tasmanian wildflower. That most of you said ah, it's pretty similar to our wildflowers, and that's that was actually labelled as a. Um, as a meadow honey, like exactly what we picture when we say wildflower, and that's why I renamed it to wildflower, yeah. um, because it actually was, you know, like in paddocks rather than in the bush, and, and that's where you got the different um, styles of, of fla flavours from. So when we refer to bush honey, we mean from large eucalypt trees and other things growing in the neighbourhood. Okay. And now David says different. where he is in Texas, the wildflower honey comes from the swamps and the thickets around there because it's real swampy down where he lives. And he's in he's in uh, mm. South Texas. So, um, you know, I, and I've heard the term California wildflower. So they're talking about mountain meadows there, which is a whole other animal, a whole bunch of different wildflowers than what we get like in the Plains states or down here in North Carolina, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think maybe we I think just, it's just sort of wildflower, a, but I think wildflower is just sort of a catch-all for whatever happens to be in the area at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's basically we know there's flowers involved. We don't know which ones, but we're pretty sure they're in this general vicinity mm -hmm. here, whatever they are. You know, what's funny? I was thinking around that distinction because if a if someone's writing down the recipe and they say, "Oh, look, a wildflower would be good here," I think often what they mean is a milder, rounder honey. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get that off a eucalypt mountain. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it comes out very dark and very strong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, Ooh. yeah, we're, yeah, we're generally talking, clover is another one that tends to kind of fall into that category here, because we have tons Well, it of, grows wild like crazy, right? Yeah, it's everywhere, yeah, and, um, and, and clover flowers offer up a nice... Uh, it's not a super light colored. It's it's got more of a golden, you know, a little bit darker golden tone, but it's a very mild, full flavored, round. Um, I hate to say generic because that seems so negative, but it is kind of a generic honey. It's pretty basic. It works anywhere. Oh yeah, yeah. That's you the can... nice thing about it. It works everywhere. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But it... clover is another one you need to go low and slow with. Mm -hmm. so, otherwise, yeah. you're going to throw a lot of esters. Um, it's also a bit like the lucerne. Honey, uh, lutheran is probably a little bit more grassy in the taste, um, or like a like you would say a wet hop sort of taste. Um, but still a nice one to use. And what's mm. a? Do you say lutheran? Lutheran, as in hay. Um, oh, 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 okay, yeah. hay, okay. Yeah. So, just a. The next step up, I guess, from clover, slightly darker, but not not very much at all, um, and nice, mild, mildly tasting. How far do you range out for your honey? I mean, do you purchase your honey more or less locally within New South Wales, from all over Australia, from everywhere? Where do you get it? Um, most of ours comes from Victoria and uh, Western New South Wales. Okay. Um, our blackberry honey comes from, comes from Tasmania, um, and some of the macadamia comes from Queensland, depending on, on who's got it. Okay. So, yeah. 
Is the Tasmanian um, honey hard to get? I mean, or is that something that for you guys is easy? Um, for us, it's easy. We use um, a company called Archibald, who are quite a big honey seller in Australia. Oh, okay. And they, uh, they range far and Yeah, they're down local to me. Get some, they get us some pretty good, pretty good honeys. Okay, um, cool. Yeah. And the blackberry's another really nice one to use. Um, sweet. Mm. Got a hint of, hint of berry to it. Not a great deal, but a hint. Um, and pretty, pretty robust in its fermentation. How do you mean? Like it keeps its flavour? Yes. Yeah. Um, keeps its flavour. It's slightly less fermentable than normal honey, so you'll get a higher finish. You won't get a, a dry mead generally out of the blackberry honey. Um, it's mm. just a different mix of the sugars in it. Mm. Now, what about yeast? What 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 yeast do you like to use? Um, I really like the Lauven D forty seven. Um, ah, okay. I, I like the flavour profile it gives. Um, and it's again, it, it's a fairly robust yeast to use, but it's got a nice. Um, known upper limit sort of thing we we pretty much you know 15 and a half to 16 percent um day in day out uh, unless you're going for a melomel in which case we've had it hit 20 percent before um Ooh. wow yeah which was it was a bit surprising considering we were going for a semi-sweet mead and we ended up with a nice dry <laughs> mead. But but a mead that'll knock your socks off and you only need one bottle of it. <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah, well, that's it. Yeah. Is that why the raspberry got to me was so dry? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's also it was why good anyway. if you you have it on ice, you lose a fair bit of that tannin dryness or mouth puckeringness from it um somehow the ice and that the uh, big chilling of it actually makes it a lot uh nicer to drink i guess you'd say y'all can go to okay. uh, what do you have uh alcohol percentage limits for what you can sell down there um no Oh wow! That's not nice. not limits, but there are different tax brackets. Oh uh, well, yeah. But... Uh, not even for wine. No. Really? Um, sorry, Hamish. <laughs> wine, it, it doesn't have the tax brackets. That's huh. a that's oh. an excise. So for beer and spirits, that's a right. That's their part. Yeah. <laughs> um, Holy cow! Because we're lucky and we come under wine. <laughs> as long as we don't fortify it and um, add. Straight ethanol and things like that to it to, to bump yeah. up the, but, the percentages. But if you can ferment to thirty five percent, that's totally okay. From my reading of the tax rules, yes. Huh? Cool. Well, must be nice. <laughs> you can't tax yeah. brackets or no, and yes, they do charge you more here um, for a higher alcohol mead. But if you try to go above a certain percentage point, they're going to land on you. Then you're getting into you're, you're enroaching on the liquor stuff, and they don't like that. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's a whole different so classification we, there. So, well, look, like, I'm really thankful that we <clears throat> we do, we do it here in Australia. And I watch the feeds come through from a lot of the American mead makers and say they have to submit recipes and submit labels and get everything clarified, and that's just a nightmare. We we have guidelines we have to run through for our labels. And we have percentages of fermentables we need to stick to. Like, we, we need to have at least 51% fermentables from honey. Um, but we don't have to submit every recipe or every label. Um, which, yeah, as I said, would just be a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's no TTB here. It is. <laughs> well, this is the legacy of Prohibition. 
is the problem. Is when prohibition happened, they tried to ban all alcohol, and that worked about as well as could be ex- as you would expect. Yeah. And um, you know, and then they realized they were missing out on all that tax revenue, so they decided to repeal it. And then 